Hey friend, Brandon here. You'd think by now we would have learned to not be surprised at Google and how they managed to do some of the most outrageous, illogical, self-sabotaging thing with their Google phone lineup. We anticipate all the things they could do, set ourselves up for a variety of crazy choices, and then Google manages to find another way to completely surprise us with another decision that legit makes no sense. So what is it this time? I can't believe I'm saying this. It looks like Google may make their upcoming Google Pixel 4a better than the Google Pixel 4 XL, and all of this before the Google Pixel 5. It's insanity. So let's talk about it in some new Google Pixel 4a leaks because this is tech today. This video is sponsored in part by Storyblocks, my go-to source for royalty-free animated backgrounds, location b-roll, sound effects, and more. It's how I made that intro that you just watched, my outro, and so much more. Go to storyblocks.com slash thisistechtoday to find out more. Make sure to share and subscribe, hit that bell icon to be notified when I post a new video, I'd really appreciate it. With the launch of the Google Pixel 3a, Google seemed to have stumbled upon a big hit for a phone and doubled the Google Pixel sales. As the first phone developed by the new HTC talent that they acquired, to take over and replace the team in charge of the much maligned Pixel 3, many had high hopes for Google's new efforts, seeing them as a more self-aware and competent Google. Even the early marketing for the Google Pixel 4 seemed to indicate the same tone. But then, the Google Pixel 4 actually came out, and the narrative couldn't get away from glaring negative issues, specifically with the battery of the regular model. Now, that's not to be confused with the XL model, which I use as my daily driver and love to use. There's actually a review of that up here. And the price of the Google Pixel 4 and 4 Excel in a very different smartphone climate didn't really help either. So with some pretty basic level issues of having a bad battery, a price point too high, and a fairly predictable season of buggy issues for the first couple of months, the feeling of Google being self-aware and newly capable of something greater than before began to feel like the same old thing again. So with the Google Pixel 4a, we have a lot of questions. First, what in the world would Google add to it that isn't already found in the Google Pixel 3a right now? At least for the most part. A newer processor and this design, which is essentially the same thing as the Google Pixel 3a, but with a square camera design and, and that that's it? Well, the new leaks are quite interesting to say the least, but they're also clarifying, specifically in regards to the rumor from Dave 2 d It's uh, also mind boggling because what Google may have planned makes a whole mess of their entire life up. But uh, Google's gonna Google, I guess. The main source of the leak XDA developers recently worked on an APK or software teardown of a new version of the Google camera app and found a few things that are of particular interest. First, we'll likely have 24 frames per second video on Google Pixel phones. Finally! I mean, that is the correct frame rate after all. But the most interesting thing that we see are some codenames and references that point out not two but three possible new mid-range Google Pixel devices. Now for context, Google uses fish or aquatic type names for codenames for the devices. For example, the Google Pixel 3a and 3a XL were codenamed Sargo and Bonito respectively. In this new APK teardown, we see three codenames, Sunfish, Redfin, and Bramble. How this all possibly ties in with the Dave2D leak will make sense in a minute. Between the three devices, they're broken up into two groups. Sunfish is in one group, while Redfin and Bramble are in another. The distinction is between what Qualcomm Snapdragon processor each device will be using, which is quite curious and surprising. You see, if you take these code names and you look them up in a code repository hosted by Google, which also has the code names of all the previous Google Pixel devices, you'll notice an interesting trend. Each device has the code name followed by a code like Bonito SDM670 for the Pixel 3a XL or Crosshatch SDM845 for the Pixel 3 XL. The second part of the code name references the processor for that particular device. The Pixel 3a XL has a Snapdragon 670 in it, and the Pixel 3 XL has a Snapdragon 845 in it. This format and method of documentation is consistent if you work back through the other phones in the Google lineup. Unless Google decides to randomly change how they document these things, we can confidently say that what we see and assume about the Sunfish, Redfin, and Bramble codenames is the same. So here's what all that means. We end up seeing a device with codename Sunfish using the Qualcomm model 7150, which is the part number for Snapdragon 730. 
30. And then we see two devices with codename Redfin and Bramble using the Qualcomm 7250, which is the part number for the Snapdragon 765, which is a 5G modem. How curious. Because of this information, it seems like Google may be planning one device that does not have 5G and potentially two devices that do have 5G. This might actually explain the Dave 2D leak, which I talked about in my last video going over the design of the Pixel 4a, potential specs, and what I'd like to see. You can check out that video up here. Now, the part of that video that talks about the Dave 2D leak that is relevant for this video is a claim that there will only be a normal Pixel 4a model and not an XL model. He made a claim and it simply didn't make a ton of sense from what we typically see from Google, but it did make some sense in terms of cost savings if you take that perspective. 9 to 5 Google though stated that it was a fairly sketchy rumor because their sources indicated that there would indeed be a normal and XL model. The funny thing about leaks and rumors is that we only see a portion of the truth. It seems like Dave 2D may have indeed been told that there's only a normal model from a reliable source, and that's because the XL model is a different type of phone, a 5G one. Additionally, it seems like it's more likely that we'll see two mid-range Pixel devices, not three. Redfin shows up in some areas of code, but not all like Sunfish and Bramble. XCA believes that this suggests that Redfin is a development board and not a full-on device. What that might be is unclear. Is it an early version of the Google Pixel 5 or something else? Surely the Pixel 5 wouldn't use a mid-range processor, right? It might be too early to tell what is going on with the Google Pixel 5, but to those that are more savvy with code and development than I am, please join us in the This Is Tech Day community Discord or chat and help us investigate. You have to admit, this inconsistency is quite confusing and puts Google in a very complicated spot. They're contradicting themselves, which seems to keep happening every year. SMH. In many ways, the success of the Pixel 3a puts them in a really difficult spot. They have a hit phone at a great price with enough specs to satisfy the things that most people want. I've continually referred to this as a delight to dollar ratio, which I've coined in my Pixel 3a review video, which you can check out up here. With the Pixel 4a, where do you go without messing that up? Is a simple redesign of some parts of the phone and an upgrade to the latest processor in the same tier enough to get people to upgrade their phones? Or would they see the Pixel 3a and go with that instead for even cheaper? Because surely this will be discounted. And it's not like the Pixel 3a stopped working well. Plus, people considering a Pixel A type device are really price conscious, not spec conscious. So what do you do if you're Google? You could add something that's not there on the Pixel 3a and go with 5G, but that creates a serious, serious problem. 5G ain't cheap. Now you're messing with the normal $400 and $479 price point for the regular and XL models. You're messing up that delight to dollar ratio. So do you price it high enough that you crack $500 for the 5G version? Will that 5G version cost even more than that? Some are estimating a cost that could even end up being $550, which is a whole $150 more than the base model for just a bigger screen and 5G. Or will Google add even more features to differentiate the two models. If that happens, that defeats Google's fantastic model of making both the regular and EXO models essentially the same, but with a bigger screen. They're uh, fixing what's not broken. Whatever happens, a device at the $550 price point creates even more of an issue. The regular Pixel 4 is often on sale for $600, a $50 difference with uh, better specs, more features, a higher build quality, but um, no 5G. And that is really what makes everything a mess in a confusing position to put some someone in that just wants a new phone. But wait, it gets worse. I can't believe it. If this is all true, for some crazy reason, the mid-tier budget model has 5G when the current flagship doesn't. How in the world is a Pixel 4a XL better than the Pixel 4 in terms of network tech? Surely the Pixel 5 will have 5G in it if the mid-tier models have 5G, right? So <laughs> does this mean that the upcoming Pixel 5 and 5XL will be even more expensive than the launch price for the Pixel 4 and 4XL? That is one of the reasons why the Pixel 4 and 4XL didn't sell so well. They were overpriced in a lineup of other devices that were priced more competitively than ever. So I'm legit confused as to what Google's doing and how they'll get themselves out of this bind. If the Pixel 4a is announced at the same time and way that the Pixel 3a was, then we'll see it at Google I.O. 2020, which will take place on or around May 12th. So if Google happens to watch this video, please figure out what the heck you're doing, think about strategically and make a plan. <laughs> don't pull a Star Wars. Oh, and don't ruin the delight to dollar ratio. Pay attention to the landscape of fantastic devices that are priced competitively right around you. Price it right 
creates something with excellence for both the A models and your flagships. Speaking of excellence, this video sponsors Storybooks. If you didn't know, almost all of my intro, outro, and motion graphic backgrounds and more are made with Storyblocks. Storyblocks helped me put all that together because of their unlimited library of over 1 million royalty-free assets that you can use and their library is constantly growing. They seriously have everything from stock video, location b-roll, images, sound effects, music, after effects templates, and more. It's so great to use for commercials, videos for your business or group, podcasts, live streams, and so much more. The best part is that it's way cheaper to sign up for Storyblocks than buying each and every little clip. That actually gets really expensive doing it that way. When I was trying to figure out the branding for my channel and was shopping around, I realized it would save me a ton of money going with Storyblocks. Plus, the benefit of going with Storyblocks over hiring someone else for my intro and outro is I still have access to the library for anything else. So, you should totally check out Storyblocks for your next project by going to storyblocks.com slash this is tech today. There's no other company that comes to mind that I'd use for royalty free video than Storyblocks. Check them out. So, what do you think Google will do with the Pixel 4a line and the upcoming Pixel 5 line? How will they reconcile this mess they've made out of their lineup? Also, would you even want a 5G enabled mid tier Pixel device? And if so, how much would you pay for it? Let me know in the comments and in the This Is Tech Today community Discord chat server. We'd love to have you. Thank you for watching This Is Tech Today, where we talk about the intersection of technology in our everyday lives, in business, and in all things creative. Until next time.